everybody else in the staff introduce themselves. Starting with. I'm Patricia Lacey, program coordinator. Karen Hood, physical program manager. Barbara Johnson. The City of East Cleveland Department of Community Development will probably have a budget of around $1.2 million. That $1.2 million dollars will be broken down into two sources that we get it from. That would be CDBG and HOME. And HOME is the Home Investment Partnership. For the HOME program, we do rehab. So we go in and we fix the code violations on the property. That might mean we do the roof, the windows, we normally don't try to paint them through the home program. We like to put up siding because it's less maintenance for the resident. We can waterproof the house. Anything dealing with a code violation that we do in the home program. In that, we'll probably have about $200,000 that will go in the line item for the home program. For CDBG, we'll have, that's what we do, the public service, public improvements, the housing, so we do all that under CDBG. That's part of demolitions. That's where we get the bulk of our money. And keep in mind when we do our budget that 20% of that money goes towards admin. And that's what we do to pay for our salaries for those who work in the department. We pay for um, office supplies, admin. So that's what we do with the admin. About 20% of that money goes there. In moving forward, um, with HUD, they want us to take care of three statutes, and those are our goals that we have to make sure everything falls up under. So we can't do anything that doesn't fall under those statutes. And those three statutes, statutes are decent housing, suitable living environment, and expanded economic opportunities. And we go over the survey, and we're going to break that thing down so you'll see how those funds are broken down in there. Do we have any questions about the things we've talked about so far? All right, moving on. HUD requires the citizen participation in preparing its action plan. And in doing that, this is our first public hearing for this. Um, we have to make sure we put it in the newspaper, um, in the public notice, and make sure that we advertise. Um, we have to put all this stuff that we're doing today in a package that goes to HUD to let them know that we at least gave the community and the residents and the stakeholders a chance to take part in what we're going to put together moving forward. The citizen participation plan uh, is a must. Uh, the things that we do in that is we have to make sure we provide that opportunity. We have to make sure that we give our best faith effort to make sure that we did that. That's why at the last city council meeting, we made sure we made an announcement, the mayor made an announcement. We can't make people come, but we also make, we always make sure that we have the opportunity for them to come. Can I <clears throat> can I intercede with at this point? Yeah. Uh, we have a channel called Channel Nine, and I see the mirror on that channel all the time. I'm going to be objective and deal with this factually. Uh, our council meetings, the one that you attend, is not televised because we don't have that right now because of the financial crunch. But putting this event on the cable station would be the right thing to do in terms of marketing the event to the public. Now, it's not on you. The last, I think, the last five or six years I've been coming, I always make a point to come. There's always two or three people. I think that, uh, two years ago it was about five or six the largest I've been to in the last maybe 10 years. Uh, we have to be serious about marketing to the people 
in this community in terms of this, their role in this and that. And, and I think we failed that. I'm talking about in terms of at least using, at least using Channel 9. Now, another component that you guys don't have time to do is getting flyers up and down the streets to the people, okay? Because what you do here is important in terms of the people, and I'm gonna tell you what I hear, and I mentioned to you in a telephone conversation, but the need is, from my perspective, I don't wanna jump the gun, but the need that I hear from my constituents, and I'm at large, that means I have the entire city, I'm not in a little war, is the seniors that have been in these houses for 30, 40 years, 20 years, are saying they need money to fix their roofs, they need money to fix their, their furnaces, and the basic kind of things. Why is that important? Because these are the people that are in these houses, they're stuck in these houses, and they pay taxes. So, okay, all right. Okay, but, but I, I want to share, share this with you, brother, that uh, the attendance at this, at this event is just, it's just horrendous. I mean, with, with the issues we're facing, and, and I think we fail, and I'll be a part of this, in terms of what can we do better to get more people out? I mean, this, is, this happens consistently. I said, I'm going to go here tonight and, and say how I feel about the situation as an elected official and as a citizen, but this has this been going on far too long. We never can hide anybody. I have a, a meeting as a city leader, as a council person, and I pack the house. I'm just one person. So this, this, I just need to put this out because it's truthful. It's not a criticism to anybody. It's a fact. You're talking about right now we don't have home money, right? It starts next year, right? We don't have home money where, where we fix these houses. We don't have it right now. Is that correct, Mr. Leach? Okay, so it starts next year. Okay, the CBG fund, the CDBG fund, all this is important because we, uh, our potholes, our streets, all like that. But I'm saying to you, brother, if you become the, uh, the director of this department, whatever the case may be, uh, we got to do better, better marketing and get things out. Karen Hood and Miss Lacey, welcome back. Oh, welcome you. back. Thank you. That's duly noted. I did make the notes tonight. Okay. Um, and what we do is I identify the assessment. We identify and an the assessment of housing and community development needs. That's part of what we do as far as going to the action plan. We look at the programs and strategies. So we look at what programs and strategies we have. So for example, the paint program, the emergency repair program, the street projects, the demolitions. That's all part of what we do. If there is a substantial change, we have to let the public know. Uh, for example, this year we had a substantial change in the budget because HUD allowed us to have two plow trucks slash salt trucks for the city. That was more than what was an amended budget, so we have to have a substantial change. We have to put it in the newspaper and make sure that the public had a chance to give their um, comments on that. So that's all part of it. And then at the end, we, we got a report card. And our report card is the caper. Um, we have to submit that to HUD to let them know everything that we go over and everything that we put in this plan, and this is part of that plan, will go into caper. And that's our report card that we did. The city staff conducts the process. So everything that's going on is done by the city staff. And that's the community development. Um, it's an open policy upon request. So if anybody wants to see the action plan or anything that we have, the paper, action plans for years past, it's welcome. You just come in, make a request, and it'll be here. Um, maybe in the future we'll look at putting it online because this is available to the public. Well, how was the paper from last year? Do you, do you, do you have knowledge of what the results of the paper was from last year? They haven't gotten back to us. They, they didn't find anything wrong or bad. Um, it's just like we submitted the action plan. Um, they have yet to let us know to release the funds. But we think we're okay. The funds are limited. Um, but, and that's why we have to make sure that whatever we suggest or we talk about, city staff is here to let us know because we have to make sure that it's an eligible use. So in our survey that we go over, we'll be able to see what our eligible use is and make sure that we make sure we allocate money for things that we can actually spend the money for. Any questions on that? 
So at this time, we're going to pull out the survey and we're going to go over um, what we want to do. And our survey looks like this. Is that for this year? This is for 2015. 2014 has already been done. In completing your survey, indicate your priority of programs that you would like to see implemented in the city of East Cleveland. Indicate one as your most important priority. Number two is somewhat important. Number three, not very important. Number four, not a priority for you at all. So we're gonna to go to decent housing. This is the first category. Decent housing includes retention and stabilization of existing affordable housing stock and affordable housing opportunities for the homeless. So in that, we have housing rehabilitation to the pay program. Third one on the list here is other, and you explain. Home buyer assistance, emergency repair program. So Councilman, as you were saying that you would like more money for roofs, you would probably pick number one as emergency, most emergency repair program. Right. And, and you can, in my discussion with you, uh, even though painting is important, but what good is a painted house if, if the, if the uh, furnace ain't working, if the roof is leaking? You, you know, you, you've heard me say about it. That is the number one issue, I think, in the city, in terms of people with home, is that. Uh, I get more calls from seniors talking about the furnace ain't working or the, the, it's leaking a, a lady this, on well, island. Here we go. This is our right. time. Everybody. Okay. So this, we yeah, that's, that's the number one, to, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of homeowners, is, is uh, emergency repair. So there we go. Just put okay. it. That's, that's your number one. Right. So should I put number one bias or? In the box. Okay. So you rank all the rest of them from there. Okay. Uh, I don't want to dominate this. The, the, the next one would be housing rehab for people that need, need housing rehab. Uh, these are housing that are going to be towed down since we always get a lot of money to tear stuff down. We don't get enough to do the emergency repair. So rehab. The people need a lot of rehab. So it's, it's not up for me. Okay, that's yeah, number two. It's, it's, it's your, it, this is for you. This is your survey. That's number two. And since, and, and, I, and I kind of stuck with this since we, we don't have that much. Matter of fact, at the last council meeting, you know, I went back and forth about this the paint program. And I basically got the council to agree that we need money for emergency repair and rehab. The paint program will have to wait because we only got a little amount of money. So those, those are the two in that area for me. Okay. All right. Is everybody done with the first section? You're right. You want, you want you need more um, details provided, ma'am? No. Okay. We're going to move on to number two, suitable living environment. A suitable living environment includes improving the safety and livability of the neighborhoods and the increasing access to quality public and private facilities and services. So those, those public improvements would be the street improvement, handicap accessibility improvements, street lighting, water sewer improvements. So you can rank those in order. One meaning the most important to you, down to four, um, not a priority at all for you. Again, I, I, uh, street improvement is in, in this category on a suitable living environment. Street improvement, potholes, uh, chuck holes, uh, is a big issue throughout the city. And if that comes on the street improvement, that's that's number one priority driving here. I'm always dodging potholes and all like that. Matter of fact, I'm so cautious. Under CDBG, we can't just you do can't do potholes. that. Okay, all right. So when you say street improvement, where it says number where, where it says street improvements, what do you mean by street improvement? That would be like we're doing North Taylor analysis. We have to go in and redo the whole street. Okay, we got North Taylor Allison is another one. On, on that list, isn't it? There's three of them. Sure. No, he mentioned another one at the last council meeting. Uh, 
a matter of fact, I saw in the legislation there's three. There's uh, North Taylor, Alveson down there in Ward 2, but there's a third one. There was a third one. I know that there was a third one. Uh, because they said they were going to do those three. What do you like the Isn't there a third one? No, it's two. There's two? Yep. Uh, the third one may be, but there was three of them on there. Because I knew about Lord Taylor and I knew about Alveson. But there was a third one on, in the legislation at the, at the council meeting last week. That's the only one that's passed. We're only going to do two. With, with we just entered an agreement with CA Aggressor. Right, Aggressor was, was, so was on there. two. I promise you. Well, I know part of North Taylor, this, we'll call it uh, South Taylor. I, I know that that's been done going up toward uh, Owlsbury. And I know North Taylor and I know Alveson, but there was another street over there. I, I'm, I'm almost absolutely, check the legislation, because the Grest is one doing it. They went out for bid, okay, they went out for bid, and nobody bid on it but the Grest. So they end up, it really is going circular, they end up where they started. But there's a, there was another one on there. Okay, all right, there's, there's another one. And I, if I find it, I'll call you, call okay. There was another one on there. Okay. Okay, and the reason why I know, because we just talked about it last Tuesday. Okay. okay. There, there was a third street on there. Okay. All right. So that's public improvements. Okay. We got another councilman coming in, so we might let him come in so we can yeah, catch yeah. up with us. Oh, uh, man, Seth. Well, you, you might remember, because you're on the country. Remember when we, uh, last, last Tuesday when we did, there was, no, was North Taylor, Allison, there was another street. What was the third street on that legislation? I'll find it. It's, it's on my desk. It, there's a third street there, brother. Uh, brother Leach. I will see it. Aggressive. Aggressive is doing all of it. There was a third street. Was you talking know, about in the legislation that we just passed? Right. Huh? Get that out. You got it with you? Okay. All right. We're gonna see. If, if, if I'm right, you gotta take me out to them. <laughs> I ain't gonna treat you. Right. Just, all right. just all right. give us all a soul. <laughs> the moment of reckoning is about right. to come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna hurt your pocket too bad. Okay. <laughs> I'll show away I'm thirsty. All right. <laughs> well, in the moment of time, Council, we're gonna wait for you to uh, grab that legislation and then we're gonna go back over because we're not that far into the agenda and catch you back up on where we have. Sorry. I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'm hungry too, but I don't think I'm my thirst for now. All right. <laughs> 